first uh, way we could achieve this is what okay what's going on here Hello and welcome. I am Dennis Mabuka and in this video we'll be looking at a really cool workflow for creating all sorts of effects right inside Blender's compositor. So it's the same technique we used in the previous sun tutorial to give the animation this feeling of energy being exuded from the surface of the sun. So you can check that video out if you haven't. So we'll just be using the same technique to create uh, different sorts of effects like this energy effect here or creating fake smoke or steam without having to do complex simulations or creating this really nice looking heat distortion effect right inside Blender's compositor. So if you're new around and you like what you see, you can do the thing to all the buttons and make sure you check out the Gumroad where you can get um, products, assets and free project files for these tutorials that you see on YouTube. So without further ado, let's just jump into Blender and see what we can do. So as usual, we'll just start in a new scene and I'm just going to do... What the f***? Uh, so we're back, I'm sorry about that. Um, so if you've been watching the channel for a while, you may remember the incident we had last year with the cube. And uh, it's been getting worse by the day and I've tried forwarding it to the developers and uh, they just didn't take me seriously. So guys be careful out there i don't think it's safe so we won't even be using a new file luckily i had this project open so we should use this one and i think we should be safe so this scene is already set up and ready to go it's even already animated and so for the world i have just a principled volume plugged into the volume of the world and it has a noise texture plugged into the density to introduce variation. And then the material of the actual objects is just a simple metallic material um, with a, some noise plugged into the roughness to introduce this, this really nice kind of dirty, grungy look on the surface. So I also strategically placed the lights and the cameras to have, I wanted to have some points in the animations that really pick up the highlights and the reflections right here and then some points in the animation where uh, it becomes a bit less um, reflective so the reason um, i did this is because we're going to use this in a bunch of ways inside the compositing so the bulk of the work that we'll be doing today will be inside the compositor but you can get this project file on gumroad for free if you want to just get the file and dissect my workflows so I'll find a nice and reflective frame like right there 
and then render out that image and then jump into the compositor. So the first thing I want to do is extract those streaks that really give your effect that sense of direction. And we're going to do that using the sunbeams effect. And you'll see why we wanted a frame with um, some nice highlights, because that's where the sunbeam, this effect will um, pick up the detail. So I'll just plug the image right there and then increase uh, the ray length. And then with this handy visualizer right there that shows you um, the source of the center of the streaks. So I'll just go, I'm just going to move this all the way off screen. All the way down somewhere like there. In fact, I'll try to, I'm seeing that the vertical axis is a bit tilted. So I'll move it also to the side just a bit. And then, yeah, I think I like that. And then I'll add a mix color node and then just add these two together. And then of course I'll reduce the opacity, the factor way down so that and these tricks are not as apparent. Something like 0.1 works really well. Yeah. So the next thing we want to do here is to distort these streaks that we've introduced. So that'll just exaggerate that sense of energy in the atmosphere distorting the, the space. So we're going to do this using the displace node. So we'll go distort, displace. And what this node does is it uses the black and white values of one input to displace the pixels on another one. And I've just created these um, noise textures right inside Eevee and rendered them out as an image sequence. So you can get these on Gumroad. Um, they have different speeds and different directions. So to fit um, your different needs. So I'll just import, import the image sequence of um, the texture is moving upwards because remember we've added streaks pointing upwards so that will be the direction that the energy is moving. And you plug the texture into the vector of the displace node and then the output of the sunbeams will go into the image of the displace node. So what this does is it's using the black and white values of the noise uh, animated texture to displace the pixels of the sunbeams being generated by these node. And if you plug that into the main image, you'll then see the effect that this has on your final image if you increase the scale in the displace node. So do something like 20. And yeah, you can see what that's, that does. And it's even a static image, but already you can you can already see it in your mind how it's the final effect is going to look. So this is how I made that uh, smoke or steamy looking effect in this render. And as you can see, for the amount of work that it took, it actually looks shockingly con convincing. Um, but it also has its own disadvantages. For example, um, it can't react to like fluid dynamics of the air in the room. So if you wanted to have a more dynamic animation, you'd have to go down the simulation route. And also if you keep the opacity really, really low, it gives that effect just a lot more realistic look. If you increase um, the opacity of the smoke layer, it's, it's then going to start looking kind of fake and break that effect. But for the amount of work that it took and the results that it gives, I was actually pretty, pretty surprised and I really, really like it. So the last thing we're going to do is create that uh, heat distortion effect. And we're going to do that using again the same image texture to now displace the actual layer with the text. And as that displaces the layer and as that movement is passed on to the layer of the streaks because we are displacing both with the same animation, 
it just seals your effect and makes it look just a lot more tied together. So what we're going to do, and then the way we're going to do it also is in a way that's going to give your effect just a lot more dynamism. So I'll just duplicate this displace layer and add it onto the image layer. And then again, plug this image into the vector. And as you can see, it's distorting the whole image uniformly. And what you really want is the distortion to be most apparent where the image is brightest and least apparent where the image is darker. Because um, kind of like where, where it's most hot, where the most heat is concentrated, that's where it will be distorting the most. So what I'll do, I'm going to add a color range, a color ramp node, and then just plug this image into there. And then I'll just crush this contrast and have something like that. I'm then going to really, really blur this. So filter, blur, um, check relative, and then increase that blur to something like that. So what this does, you can imagine how the um, the highlights of the animation will be changing from frame to frame. So where the frame will be brightest, you're going to have this mask, um, this really bl blurry mask uh, be brightest. And then we're going to use this to now control um, the displacement on the main layer of the text. So this is how we're going to do it. I'm then going to add a color ramp node, no, a mix color node, to then mix between this mask that we've created and the texture, the noise texture that we have down here. So I'll just plug that in there and then say multiply. And this is the result that we are getting. And then we can now take this and plug it into the vector of the displacement and then check out what that looks like. So already you can see um, the noise, we haven't tweaked the values in the displacement node, it's still at 20, but you can see that it's less, the displacement is less pronounced on the text. So you can just go ahead and increase the, the scale on the displacement node right there, because remember we are working on the brightest frame, so this is where the heat distortion is going to be most apparent in your animation. So I'm just going to increase that until I have something that I like. And then when you have that, remember as your animation moves about and as the brightness of the image changes, the brightness of this mask is also going to change and then that will affect the intensity of the displacement. So you see this effect where as your animation moves, the intensity of the displacement increases and decreases depending on the brightness of that specific uh, frame, which is really, really cool. So the final effect that you get looks something like this. So that's all I have for this video. Thanks for dropping by. Um, give it a like if you like the video. Share it with your friends who like this kind of stuff. Um, it really helps with the algorithm. And yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Time for you to meet me, the worst of your thoughts. Pleasure what I get from the worst of my heart. Race so feeble, yet you tore me apart Show no mercy, cause you took it too far Think again, as a hero You get ripped into pieces with your people Yeah, the fire's gonna burn you into zero Nothing but death by my ego